Hello, my name's Sean Charrington Wright, and I'd like to invite you to a wonderful world of watercolour. There's nothing I like better than, than getting the paints out, and I want to show you how to create watercolours that have atmosphere, mood, and lots of light. So let's begin. This painting uh, we're going to run through uh, together is um, basically sky, um, one large tree, a few bushes, some foreground, uh, there's a small fence, um, some distant blue horizon, um, and then a nice little Norfolk cottage with this red pan roof, and just to the right of that, uh, a bank of small trees. So, let's begin with uh, the wet into wet technique, which is uh, how this painting was created for, for almost 80-90% of it. And we begin by wetting the paper. Um, with a brush, you can you can spray as well. Uh, some people use a sponge. The main thing is not to have the paper you know, really dripping wet. You need to make sure that there's just a light sheen on there. Um, and you can see I'm I'm taking uh, water all over the place with this brush, um, and dotting it around here, there, and everywhere. If you want to test whether there's too much water on the paper, if you slightly tip a board and the water starts running, you know, in rivers, then obviously you've got a problem. So it just needs uh, to be lightly damp in a way. I'd already mixed up some mixture beforehand, which you need to do, so otherwise the paper's going to dry out. So I'm now establishing um, in various um, areas of the painting, from the sky into the middle distance and down into the foreground, um, the same mix of raw sienna. Um, it's always good to kind of get an underpinning colour, and that's the one that's you know going to going to shine through, um, because it's the first one we're laying down. I don't want it everywhere though. Um, it's easy to to start to put in blue skies later on and mix them into this raw sienna, and then you end up with green, um, which there is green in skies, but for this purpose we don't need them. Um, moving on next is. Uh, a mixture of Payne's Grey and some raw sienna, very light mixture there to bring in some green. There's a little bit of ultramarine blue as well. Um, and this mixture, um, it seems to come throughout most of the painting as it builds up. But there was sort of starting to establish some of the shapes down in the front, all still wet into wet. And then bringing in some darker green this was um, Payne's Grey, uh, Ultramarine, and a little bit more Ultramarine there, and Raw Sienna again. So just these these three colours mixing together. Um, I had a couple of different mixtures, and I was dotting in uh, some stronger paint there, as you can see, and then back to a weaker mix. So two mixes go on in my palette. Um, and then still all this working in wet into wet, which works a treat. So warm up with some uh, burnt umber uh, into the mix as well. We're throwing some of that in. There we go. Some burnt umber coming down the left hand side, but still letting it blend and bleed and do its own thing into the the greens and greys and blues that are already there. Now the the palette for this uh, whole painting was very very limited. It's just um, the raw sienna, ultramarine blue, Payne's grey, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and that was about it. So just five colours, uh, which creates unity. You know, if you, the least amount of colours you can get, the more unity you're going to create. If you had 20 colours in there, you're going to get no unity at all. And then starting to establish um, just shapes, really. That's really all we're looking at, it's just shapes. Not really too worried about um, any detail at all. The tip of the brush. Um, a 
light touches all the time, coming back in with some tissue to take out some strong pigment in the middle there. Uh, the composition of this is kind of in three layers. We'll come back to that in a second, and now coming down with some ultramarine, um, with some Payne's Grey coming down here on the left-hand side uh, to establish some sort of broody kind of stormy clouds coming in. And then going to come down with some ultramarine into the middle, coming down almost uh, in a triangular fashion, pointing. Um, the sky kind of points towards the cottage that's going to be the main focal point, which we'll see soon. And coming down with a lighter mix of grey. So it starts out dark at the top of the uh, paper and coming down lighter, again, which creates the illusion of recession. Uh, adding in a slight mixture there with some burnt umber added to the original mix. And you can see the sheen on the paper and it's still nice and wet. Sometimes just introducing some water in. You have to be careful not to introduce too much though because you'll get something that calls a bloom, which means it's like a run back into the paint. Um, it can work for some things, but not for this guy. So there we go, dabbing out now. Um, parts we want to soften some edges of the clouds. So, yeah, nice little background, nice unity there. Back in with, with some uh, feathering, some some soft, uh, clear water just to blur the edges of the clouds. You can see that's slightly dry again. Still a little bit wet here, and we're dotting in the, the outline of some... Uh, the distant sort of larger tree, um, which kind of doesn't really work, and I'm going to take that back out because it's it's not it's not going to work there. You know, it was, it was an idea, and I thought, no, we're going to move the tree across more um, to the right hand side. So here we go in. Again, um, ultramarine and raw sienna here mixed in with a little bit of. Uh, Paints grey, uh, bringing in some ultramarine on the horizon for some uh, distant tree shapes. A uh, slightly darker mix on this right hand side of ultramarine again. Again, just feather touch, just a bit too strong, so it's going to take that out really. Yeah. If you bring in strong um, distances, it can bring everything forward. And now I'm going to start to establish, there's some, not, uh, some cottages and some farm buildings down here. And, and some of the farm building roofs are like a sort of grey blue colour. And then the main part of the roof, the main cottage, is a pan, is pan tile, red, very traditional Norfolk cottage. White cottage with pan tile roof. You'll see I start to develop that again. Still the same number 12 round brush all the way through. Um... And there it goes, pentile red. That's actually um, burnt sienna, believe it or not. So there we go, the burnt sienna mix. And then uh, just hinting at some more roofs in there, just gentle touches. There we go. That's it. Nice. And bringing in on the left-hand side um, some warmer colours again. So you always want to have your warm colours coming forward and your cooler colours going back. So establishing some sort of grasses. Uh, one of the ideas I had here was to have a gateway coming through there and see a gap, but then I decided, no. You can you can overdo it with too many elements within the watercolour. You have to be very selective, especially when you're out in nature. Sometimes you can be bombarded with different elements, but try to keep this simple. And here we come in with some stronger darks on the left hand side, some green, greens, and browns, um, some burnt umber in here, just touching it on the side, touching it on the side, that just let the paint do its uh, own work. You kind of get in the shape of the bush, um, and that's the main thing. I believe that this one was a hawthorn there. I originally started some sketches on this and should have shown you them really uh, to get this. 
uh, and then echo on again with that same burnt umber, slightly weaker mix um, in the middle ground, which is uh, where we're going to attach a tree to this um, kind of bush sort of fence. Um, great thing about watercolors, you can you know you can let your imagination run. You know, is it a bush? Is it a fence? Uh, could be both. Could be neither. The wet into wet technique, though, is just making sure that you're laying in um, colour and building up and letting it blend and bleed. Trying to avoid mud. You know, if you start putting in too many hues and colours and mixing them together, just for beginners, um, if you don't know this, if you mix in four colours all together, five colours all together, you're just going to get a mess. Just keep it to two or three, even better, one. Yeah. Um, you get the purity then. Not that I'm a purist as far as watercolour is concerned, but um, you know, I believe it's the end result that counts. So we're starting to build up nicely now. Um, need to come down here into the foreground and touch in um, some more darks in here to, to bring these, these bushes in, uh, forward. As I was saying earlier, this composition has kind of three levels. It's got the, the foreground there, middle ground, and then the distance. There's another gap in between it as well, uh, between um, where the cottage is and where that tree in the second you'll see coming in, a large tree on the right hand side. At the moment, just going to work on this bush. Um, kind of mask some of the buildings that are, that are in reality were back there. Creates a little bit of mystery, you know, what's behind there. So this open Norfolk landscape is building up and developing nicely. And now I'm going to come back in with a number 12 brush again. And this is a, a darker mix um, of burnt umber. With a slight touch of ultramarine, ultramarine in it. And notice I've not just um, painted the trunk going right the way up. I've left some gaps here because I want to bring in some foliage. And the gap that's um, in the middle there. The lower gap just above the trunk, the main trunk. In, in reality, there was uh, a whole lot of um, ivy in there. So I'm going to try and establish that in later. So just gentle touches. Uh, many beginners find trees really, really difficult. You just have to practice them. You have to get to know the shapes of different trees. And what I try to do, you know, in, in real life, out there looking at a tree, for most trees, it's absolutely, you know, chocker with branches and twigs and so on. I'm trying to simplify and just get like the silhouette of the tree, really, so you get the flavor of the tree. And as I said earlier, I'd taken out um, yeah, that distance blue, but brought it back in again. It now seemed to work. So my initial idea, that I dabbed it out, actually, I was probably right in the first place. But best to hire on the side of caution. So here we go, establishing this middle distance in the bushes. Um, bringing in some warmer colours. Uh, always think dark light, dark light counter change, which means you know lighter parts and darker parts uh, in the painting. And there's plenty of that going on in this painting. Back in to use um, some more greys, grain. Greens, greys, greens, greys, greens, greys. A uh, slight touch of blue in here as well. I'm bringing in the shadow. Like a grey paint. There's a weak paint's grey plus a little bit of ultramarine in there to bring in the suggestion of a, a shadow from the bush. So it seems to be working quite well. There's a, there's a massive gap there in, in the tree, so we're going to work on that now and, and bring in um, that distant tree that's around the cottage to start with. Like a, there was like a bank of poplar trees there. Um, 
and just just the shape nothing more no details too far away just going to keep the shape um and that's it and, and by bringing in some darker tones there that that throws up the lighter tones of the white cottage which is where we want the eye to go first With all these little touches going on, as you can see, I'm using my finger to, to, to bring things in and then flick things in and flick things out. I kind of like get my fingers in to the paintings. And now on the side of the brush, this is a, a burnt sienna mix, um, quite a light mix. I'm just going to establish um, the shape of the foliage there. Going round. Um, just to be patient, I just have to touch in. It's all on the side of the brush. Notice the side of the brush. Same brush at the moment. Again, there we go. Just touching in around. So it's kind of getting the shape of this tree. And then in a second, I'm going to gonna add some more tone. So to bring it darker and some, some different color, I'm going to bring in so a greener mix. And then I'm going to bring in a browner mix to bring things forward. But you'll see that in a second. So you can see where the, the gap was, and I've, and I've brought in some foliage there, but that's that's going to get um, it's going to get more leaves on it soon. So I mix up uh, a darker mixture. This time it's ultramarine and Payne's grey. I'm bringing that in there. There's a slight touch of raw sienna as well to make make the green. Um, just gentle touches and just trying to get it to blend and bleed a bit with um, what's underneath. So you've got some of that uh, light brown mix sort of coming through. I keep saying it, but it is all about just gentle touch with watercolour. Just touching it in. Let the, let the watercolour do its own thing rather than trying to force it. Um, it's always the best way it always works much better than you trying to move the paint around it doesn't like to be fussed too much it just goes flat and dead then I'm going to come in with some darker mixture in a second um, just a yeah, nice tree shape there and there's sort of a lot of blending and bleeding going on which is great and we're going to bring in some darker tones there we go, the ivy going up the tree just let that touch it in here and there, not everywhere. Just let it blend, bleed. There it is. Back there, slighter darks on those poplars in the distance, just outlining the edge of that pantile roof, making sure this is sort of kind of like your darkest dark out there, and there's a paint grey going in here, just to throw up where we want the eye to go. If you squint your eyes up in nature, you can see the tones. You can you can also do that with with the painting and see which is going to be, you know, your darkest place. on some windows in the distance a few windows in those uh, farm buildings down at the front there as well but leaving it all pretty vague there's no detail in there I'm not going to start painting them bricks and things there's, there's no point you just don't see them too far away and now coming in even darker here where this uh, foliage was um, would you see the reason why I left that gap there in the, early on yeah, and just letting that blend and bleed again because it's still still damp, still damp paint. This left hand bush now, again, if you notice, bringing in the same colour that I just used, same tone just to kind of echo what's going on. It's kind of balancing things up. I'm going to dot in some warmer colours here in, in, the, um, in this bush and grasses area. 
and then in with some highlights with the edge of my finger now just scratch those out you know, some people use razor blades some people use knives I just like the edge of my finger now to get my fingers in there I love the, the feel of the paint get a bit of my own DNA in there as well and then back in the same number 12 brush to, to, to dot in some uh, shadow under the eaves of the cottage and the eaves of those farm buildings so we're getting closer and closer at the end of this painting and hopefully you've been able to see the way it's been constructed you can always stop the DVD uh, that's the great thing about them isn't it in videos and just go back and pause and, and just, just look at things over and over again see how it was all constructed and put together So now I'm in with a um, stick. I love sticks. Um, and this is just a piece of stick I found in a wood somewhere. Sharpened and then dipped in India ink. This is permanent India ink. Uh, you know, once it's on, it's on. I mean, you can, with this technique, I've kind of done it you know, in reverse by bringing it in now. But I wanted to bring in some darks to give it like, some sharpness because it's very blurry all over the image. Um, you know, I also paint the other way around where I put in the darks first and then, then wash over. It's kind of called traditional line and wash. But this way also, it I, this to me is very satisfying is bringing the darks right at the end. I know some painters do it in reverse and I do it in reverse myself sometimes. It's all about the mood and what you're trying to create. And, and this kind of just brings in that little bit of punch. You don't want to overdo it. But it brings it a bit of punch. Just here and there, bring in this, this darker so in nature you, nature if you go out there it's it's much darker than india ring it's just the darks are just incredibly dark and the lights are incredibly light all coming from the sky so i think the, the sort of windy broody kind of stormy um summer afternoon is coming through here and now we're going to establish this fence just touching in the darker tones there um which kind of puts it all in its place really this fence is a little device and lots of watercolour painters or painters generally use a fence to, to lead the eye in. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I certainly had great fun painting it. Uh, remember to keep painting. Keep, keep practising. Practice certainly does make, well, I don't know about perfect, but it certainly can, can make you a better painter if you practise. Um, just the basic elements there. Um, this is just a simple masking tape. Just hold it down, take that around, you just get a little edge, which is quite nice. And then I tend to use mounts a lot. Um, any kind of mount will do, just to put around, just to kind of frame it up and see how it's worked. And I'm pleased with the overall uh, effect of this painting. So there we go, off goes the masking tape. Ta-da! Yep, yeah, there we go. And then put in a mount and see what it looks like. There we go. Yeah. yeah I'm pleased with the composition. And I think this painting works because it's um, simple, straightforward, and wet into wet. Thanks for joining me on today's watercolour demonstration. And I hope you can come back real soon. Keep painting and take care.